Okay, hello everyone. Um, we are here today to take a look at one of the most quintessential uh, movements from the traditional Wu style Tai Chi syllabus, and that is brush knee walking. And this is, you know, if, if the language is like an alphabet, the movements of, of the form, uh, you learn an alphabet, you study, and you start to understand spelling and grammar, and then you're able to express yourself, right? So from that perspective, um, brush knee walking would be the letter A. <laughs> it is the, the first thing that we're taught in class um, in that traditional syllabus. And indeed, when I first started training, um, my teacher, Michael, Michael Acton, he made me walk up and down for six months doing brush knee walking before he let me do anything else. And to this day, I'm convinced he did that to try and get rid of us because we were mad. <laughs> and we made his life really difficult. And 25 years later, we're still making it awkward for him. Sorry, Michael, we love you. Um, thank you for putting up with us. Uh, brush knee walking, this is what it's all about. So, I mean, there are many, many, many variations on brush knee walking um, across the, the martial arts world. Uh, in particular, when we talk about the Wu style of Tai Chi, um, it's small. Tai Chi is, um, you know, it is many things to many different people, but the Wu style Tai Chi tries to keep things neutral and discreet. It's not interested in kind of expressions of, of movement that are similar to Wushu. There's nothing visible or operatic or theatrical in Wu style Tai Chi. It is small, invisible, discreet, efficient, gets it done, and get out, right? It's, it's really simple. So from that perspective, brush knee walking um, is a really, we don't look at it in terms of applications. We talk of it as a pure movement in itself. So it has many different applications that you can apply and use um, in various different scenarios, but you study it purely as as, as mathematics, as, as basic physical literacy, without any consideration of the possible applications of this movement in a self-defense or a combat situation. So what I would like you to do um, is this. The first action is simply, you're gonna take your hands, and you're gonna protect your face. Down and up, down and up. And I'll show you from the side. And I want you to notice my shoulders don't come up as I do this. I'm not hunching. Right? You're going to see a lot of this in, in a lot of combat systems. Um, and it is very effective if you've only got like six months to train, uh, for example, a soldier or, or an enforcement officer or someone to, to have some self-defense skills. They're going to bring their shoulders up. Um, but we don't teach that in the traditional martial art of Tai Chi. You're going to keep the shoulders down and instead you're going to lift the elbows up. Um, so you're going to protect the face here thus, the elbow comes up to the height of the shoulder. Um, if you bring the shoulder up, you, you expose these, um, these floating ribs. This way with the shoulder down, there's a little bit more of a gap around the ear, but you, you, you contain um, the exposure of the ribs to a much better degree. Um, again, if you're going to a grappling situation and that shoulder comes up, this makes it really easy to trap the center of the back. Um, whereas the shoulder stays down and you'll find there's a much greater capacity to adapt to somebody who tries to switch from a, a striking method to a, a grappling method. And a good fighter will switch between these like this. So what you need to be able to do is to be covered against both of those eventualities. The hand protects against the strike, the shoulder down protects against the potential rush for the, for the grab and, and the wrestling application. So um, from here, up it comes and down, up it comes and down. And it's exactly the same as doing this. Oh! Difference being, don't do that. Don't get cut here. You get cut here, you don't wake up. You get cut here, you'll never play the piano again, but you know, you'll be able to hold your grandkids. Yeah, so hands in towards the face. Do not do this. Right? This is not going to help you survive. <laughs> you need to be able to see through the gap. Shoulders down, hands up, protecting the temples and the eyes. There you are. Mother stance, head up, bum down. 
Breathe through the belly, balanced in the feet and relaxed. Oh, it's so easy. There it is. There it is. Step one. All right, what's the next? We're gonna do them one by one. All right, so now I'm gonna lift this hand up to protect my face and down. And this hand up to protect and again. And again. And again. And you look from the side. Nothing else is moving. I, 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 I flex from the shoulder, I flex from the elbow. All right, one, two. And now we do them at the same time. The hand literally comes straight up. Notice how the elbow remains forwards of the center of the body. I haven't brought it back like this, which is again constricting the, the upper back. Uh, I'm not letting the elbow wing out like this because this is gonna collapse on my own face. Uh, this structure won't work. You have to bring the elbow forwards so that the tricep can support the collapsing hand above the head. This is a much more effective and efficient method. So from here, one and down, two and down, three and down. And what I'm gonna do now as I'm doing this very simple movement is I'm gonna look at Lao Kung, the point between the forefinger and the middle finger in the center of the palm. You can feel it, it sings when you press it, right? So you're just going to look at that. One, and down. Two, and down. Three, and down. And you can see it's still the same movement, just a bit more discreet. Here it is, one, and down. Two, and down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush the knee as I release it. One, and it's going to drop down and across. Two, down, and across. And you can see when it draws, it's not just drawing straight this way, it's actually drawing across the body slightly as well. One and down, two and down, three and down, four and down, right? Really simple crescents being expressed from the elbow primarily with a little bit of lifting of the elbow with the flex at the shoulder. And you can see again, my hands are not coming back to here. They're staying forwards of my body, forwards of my body. All of the arm is forwards of the shoulder and it remains forwards of the shoulder throughout the exercise. Up, down, draw the bow and release. Draw the bow and release, draw the bow and release. So now we're going to consider the two hands working in harmony. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw the bow thus. And you can see this palm is facing my face, right? It's towards me. The second hand is now going to come across and with the palm facing out, I'm going to wash down past the elbow, brushing the knee past the groin, there it is. And then I'm going to release the arrow that I've drawn forwards, thus. And we end up with a three-part sequence. Draw the bow, brush the knee, release the arrow. One, two, three. Draw, brush, release. Draw, brush, release. Draw, brush, release, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, ah, it's... right, let me just quickly check to make sure it's still filming, woohoo, we're good, all right, so we are 10 minutes in, what have we got, what have we got, so you now have this lovely, simple one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now we're going to show from the side the same thing. Draw the bow, brush the knee, release the arrow. Look, the elbow is down, the shoulder is down. It's a cradle here. The palm is in the center line, the middle finger in line with my nose, and it's at the height of my heart or even my throat if I want to train slightly more intensity. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. Draw the bow, 
brush the knee, release the arrow. Draw the bow, brush the knee, release the arrow. Notice at the end, the palm is very relaxed. It's like I'm about to catch a ball. This is again, this is a, a, a Wu style palm. You'll see some people have their palms like this. Some people have their palms like this. Some people will do very particular expressions with the fingers. Uh, the Wu style palm is literally just like you woke up and you, hello, there's your hand. That's my hand. That's what it looks like. That's, that's maybe I should use it the way it is. Right, so th that's the Wu style. It's just like you're gonna catch a ball. Right, so here I am. Draw, brush, release. Draw, brush, and release. Keep it natural, keep it comfortable, keep it relaxed. And you'll notice now, as I draw the bow, there's a tiny bit of rotation in the waist. If I have not sunk the bum and lifted the head, that rotation will take place in the tibiofemoral joint and it will hurt you. So you keep the head up, soften the legs. So as I draw the bow and I turn the waist just a few degrees, how far? So my heart maintains its connection to Lao Gong in the center of my palm. Brush the knee, fire the arrow, draw the bow. Oh, look, see how I've rotated to face Lao Gong. There it is, there's the brush the knee, and then there's release. And I don't go further. At the end of the arrow's flight, it is central. My body, my shoulders, and my hips are facing the target. I draw the bow and turn the waist on the receiving action, on the gathering. And as I release, back to the middle. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, brush knee, brush knee, brush knee, brush knee. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into an action that incorporates the feet. Now remember, I said at the beginning of this lesson that Michael made me do this for six months, right? This is not a lesson really. This is just a little reminder for people who have been investing in the study of brush knee walking for months. So you just need to go over the details again, remind yourself of what's going on and string it together in your own time in your homework, right? Um, if you're trying to learn from this video, you're gonna find uh, there's a lot of questions. Each time you realize another component of how this comes together, you'll have questions and I can't answer them, right? Not on this video. You have to get in touch and find someone to teach you. Um, if you have been taught though, this is a, a really nice way to remember it. So from here, I'm gonna step out and come to pipa hands. What does it look like from the side? My empty foot, I shift the weight down into the right foot, left hand, left foot reaching out, right palm taking the pulse, taking the pulse. That's it, look, pipa hands. Draw the bow brush the knee and look how, can you see if I had a thread between the finger and the toes, they move together like a puppet. Yeah, or like a dolphin's tail either with this one, it's lovely. Right. So as the hand sinks, the foot sinks. And that is phase three being permitted now because I've connected to the floor advance to release the arrow sit back to gather draw brush fire gather draw brush fire sit back to gather one two three sit back to gather draw brush fire from the front uh, i'll keep the same foot forwards Keep our hands. Now this foot is empty and it remains empty until phase three, right? Which is draw the bow, brush the knee and fire the arrow. Thus I arrive in forward archery stance. If your forward archery stance isn't good enough to do this, then you, you, you're, you're too early at this chapter. You need to go back. Go back and study the walking exercises. Go back and study the, the stance exercises. Draw brush, fire the arrow, sit back, draw, brush, fire the arrow. I'm going to change sides now. Now my right foot is empty. Draw the bow, brush the knee, the foot and the hand moving together. 
transitioning from yin leg to yang sit back again gather at this point foot's empty draw the bow brush the knee fire the arrow look at the posture forward archery where's the hand midline height of the throat height of the heart sit back to gather draw brush fire gather draw brush fire gather and now we turn it into a walking exercise how do we do that well you you should already be familiar with six steps to walking all we're going to do is we take the module from the brush knee hand and we add that to complete the six steps to walking to make the whole shape remember what we said at the beginning about it being an alphabet so we're taking one letter and another letter putting them together to make a, a word right essentially that's what's happening um, and that's why I love the Tai Chi way of doing it so much it's not about learning combinations or sequences that you then execute um, in combat this is about understanding movement and seeing the shapes for what they are as pure movements not as means to an end right so from here draw the bow brush the knee fire the arrow now we're going to do phase four five and six here's four releasing the back foot and as i tuck the bum for five i'm going to draw the bow with my yin hand five there it is i'm ready draw drawing of the bow is complete six step in step out one brush the knee two advance to fire the arrow three release four tuck the bum and draw the bow five step in six step out one same hand and foot are forwards same hand and foot are forwards the drawn hand is on the same side as the heavy heavy leg on the back brush fire release draw gather one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three and we're going to go backwards sit back draw the bow step in brush the knee fire the arrow going backwards this is known as repulsing the monkey again i just want to give you a reminder there's no way you're going to learn this just purely from the video and get the insides correct you can you're welcome to try now i'm going forwards again draw and fire sit back repulse the monkey boom yeah brush knee walking doesn't matter whether you're going forwards or backwards changing direction you can make it up as you go along and there are so many different variations of this um, if you practice the big slow form every instance of brush knee is done the same way but by the time you arrive through a few weapon sets to study the fast form the traditional fast form um, you'll discover that each time you do brush knee it's expressed slightly differently so it's like you you learn it as a block capital but then you discover that there's so many different variations on the letter a you've got cursive script and you've got comic sans and they're all slightly different for a different job right brush knee walking take your time with it take years with it it should be the way you go to the shops to get some eggs right just you'll see people old folk still walking like this just getting to the park and then they'll get to the park and they'll do their form properly once they arrive right so make it make it a part of the kind of um, make it part of your life part of the background it just happens all the time uh, I 
if I need to pick something up, I'm going to lift it using the same method. Yeah, it's brush knee. It's the same, the same action. Yeah. If I reach out to um, open a heavy door, um, <coughs> yeah, that's it. So you use these things every day for doing the simplest of tasks. That is Kung Fu. If you're not making it part of your life, it's just a hobby. It's just something you talk about when you go and meet your friends. You want it to be real, you have to make it real. Okay? Brush knee walking every day. Be well. <laughs>